Hi, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of Ottawa, Laboratory for Paleoclimatology, also with Carleton University, Department of Geography and Environmental Studies. In this video, I'm going to derive the equilibrium temperature of the Earth. I'm going to talk about what factors um, change it. Obviously, uh, greenhouse gases are bringing us out of the equilibrium that we've had since the end of the last ice age, and we're you know, since the Industrial Revolution, we've been heading upward to higher temperatures, and I'll explain some of the physics behind that. So let me start with the sun here. Okay, so this is the sun. Surface of the earth, of sun is about 6,000 degrees Kelvin. Now, zero Kelvin is unattainable. We can get pretty close. It's absolute zero. It's where the motion of all molecules ceases. Everything's locked at a latest. It's basically minus 273.15 degrees Celsius is the conversion factor. Okay, now we've got all these planets uh, orbiting the sun, right? So, I don't know if you remember this. Mother very early makes jam sandwiches using no peanuts. Get rid of P right now, we'll add it back later probably. Okay, this is Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. Right? Mother very early makes jam sandwiches using no peanuts. So each of these things is going to be a distance, uh, you know, R from the center of the sun. Right? The volume of a sphere, radius r, is 4 thirds pi r cubed. I'm not going to derive that. If you take the derivative of this, bring the 3 down, drop the 3 to a 2. 4 pi r squared is the derivative of this. This will be the surface area, the surface area of this whole sphere. Okay, so at a distance uh, r from the sun, the energy from the sun will be spread out, you know, in these ever-increasing concentric um, spheres, if you like, with surface area 4 pi big r squared, well, r, little r squared in this case. Okay, um, how much, so there's a couple things I have to tell you now. There's a couple laws. There's something called the Stefan... Stefan Boltzmann law, and that's the intensity, if you like, will be epsilon sigma t to the fourth power. And then the units will be watts per square meter. So this will be the energy. Think of your 100 watt light bulb, that's a power. So this is a power per square meter. This is the power per square meter um, coming away from the sun. So you would multiply this by the 4 pi r squared. The meters would cancel out. That would be the watts that you would have, you know, at a certain distance r from the sun. Okay? So it's going to be higher at Mercury. We call that the solar constant at each individual planet. Okay, so it would be highest for Mercury, next highest for Venus, then we have Earth's number, then it's weaker for Mars, and so on. So this affects the habitability of all of the planets because those, um, that power going to that planet has to be sufficient. You know, we say Earth is in the sweet spot. So the number for Earth. Um, so we'll call this uh, S, okay, the solar constant, okay, just a solar constant. It's not exactly constant. There, we have sunspots on the sun. Those are darker areas of the sun, but the areas around the dark area, so you'd think with sunspots, your sun's putting out less energy, but the areas around the dark sunspots actually have high magnetic fields and more energy. So when there's a lot of sunspots, the, Earth, the sun's putting out a bit more energy. And then when there's few sunspots, it's putting out less. The variation is, is small, it's about 0.1%. OK, 
Okay, but so this number is, you know, it's a quasi constant if you like. So what we get, so epsilon is the emissivity, varies between zero and one. For a black body, it's going to be one. So the sun's a very good uh, approximation of a black body. Okay, this is one. This is the Boltzmann constant and temperature in Kelvin to the fourth power. Okay, we know the distance of the the average distance from the Earth to the Sun. So we plug in that distance here for R, square it, multiply by 4 pi, multiply by 1, multiply by the constant, and we, um, we know the temperature of the Sun, 6,000 Kelvin, so we can get the solar constant, and it's about 1470, watts per meter squared on the earth, okay? So that's the, that's what S is. Okay, so now I have to start over again here. Okay, so this energy, that's the energy at the top of the atmosphere of the earth. Okay, so now we've got the earth, radius R, remember, the surface area is 4 pi r squared. Okay, so this s is coming to the earth. Okay, so this s, so, so let me, um, okay, so I'll, I'll do the equations here. I think you can see, I think this is still within camera range usually. Okay, so. So we've got this solar constant of light coming at the Earth. Now what it sees is, if you just look at the Earth from a distance, you don't see the whole surface area, you just see a, a disk of radius R. So what's the area of this disk of radius R? It's just uh, pi R squared, right? That's the disk. This is the solar constant. And how much is reflected by the Earth? That's the albedo of the average albedo of the Earth. We'll call that alpha. It's about 30%. So if you're up in a satellite looking at the Earth, about 30% is reflected. Okay, the Moon's obviously much lower. So how much is absorbed by the Earth? It'd be 1 minus alpha. Okay? So this is the amount of energy in total that's going to the Earth. Okay? Now, the Earth is also obeying the Stefan Boltzmann law, which is a law basically from 1883 when it was first formulated. Okay? So we can write that equation again. Sigma epsilon, sigma t to the fourth. So the Earth is heating up, it reaches an equilibrium temperature T, and at that T it radiates a certain amount of energy back out to space, and that has to be equal to the energy coming in in order to have an equal, equal uh, a, te a temperature that's stable or equalized in balance. Okay, so the Earth temperature T, we're going to calculate that equilibrium temperature now. Okay, I'm not talking about the Sun, this is the Earth case. So we can take, epsilon is going to, is, we'll assume one, we'll assume it's a black body first, no atmosphere, we can assume it's a black body, this is the constant that we know, the Boltzmann constant, temperature of the earth for fourth power. Now, the total, this is the amount emitted in the units of this will be watts per square meter, so we have to, this is coming out from all directions from the earth, so we have to multiply this by four pi, R squared, and that will be the total amount of energy that's emitted from the Earth. So in equilibrium, these two factors have to equal each other. Okay? Where's my eraser going? There it is. Okay, so here's what we get. So I'll just write write these out on one line, 
I think I need to go a bit over here. S pi r squared, 1 minus alpha. Okay, that's this guy. Is equal to epsilon sigma t to the fourth, 4 pi r squared. Okay, this will be our equilibrium equation. Now notice that the pi r squared and the pi r squared can just drop out. So what we get is we can get t to the fourth. We can solve for t to the fourth. And that's equal to? Okay, so you need to bring sigma epsilon 4 pi on the bottom. That's just equal to s 1 minus alpha over sigma epsilon over 4 sigma epsilon, okay? Okay, so this is what we get. Okay, so alpha is 0 0.3, S is at uh, 1470 watts per square meter. We know what this is, we take this to be 1, and we can solve for t to the fourth, and we can solve for t, and we get 255 Kelvin. Okay, what's that equal to 2? Two, two? You need to subtract 273.15, so this is equal to minus 18, roughly, degrees Celsius. Okay, so that's the equilibrium temperature of the Earth. So no atmosphere of the Earth, that would be the temperature, obviously that's the temperature of the Moon. Okay, now we know that the average temperature of the Earth is plus 15 degrees Celsius. So the difference here is actually 33 degrees Celsius. And this is the greenhouse gas effect which makes our planet pleasant to live on. So what we would have to do is, if you bring the epsilon over here, epsilon t to the fourth is equal to s, one minus alpha over four sigma. We know what all these things are for Earth, so we get a constant here. So as the temperature is rising on the Earth, up to the, fifth, up to thir up to the um, 15 degrees Celsius, then epsilon has to get smaller. So the factor x epsilon times t to the fourth is a, has, so as t is increasing, so what the greenhouse effect does effectively is it reduces epsilon from one to slightly less than one, and therefore the temperature has, the temperature has to rise, so the t to the fourth factor times epsilon stays the same. Okay, because this is a constant. So this is the greenhouse gas effect. So our new equilibrium temperature, because of the greenhouse gases, is slightly higher. Okay, so this is um, basically the, the other factor you can look at is you can look at the spectrum of energy coming from the sun. Because also, for every black body, there's something called a Planck curve. So the, the curve comes like this. And the peak of the radiation here, this is in the visible, this would be the 6,000 Kelvin curve. Okay, so you can get the radiation distribution. And for the Earth, if I did it on the same graph here, the Earth would be a little tiny curve here coming down. And this would be, um, this would be about 10 or 20 micron or something like that rather than 0.5 micron, which is a visible curve, but also the amplitude would be way, way down because the Earth is nowhere near as hot as the Sun. Okay, so these, the, the, so there's another law called Wien Displacement Law, which was an 1896 law, I believe, which basically from the temperature alone, you can get the, 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 the properties of the frequencies that are emitted from that black body. Okay, so I hope this helps. And uh, I'll uh, continue doing these videos. Thank you.